Hello everyone. Today we are cooking tempura fried orange chicken. We are going to start by getting your rice on to cook and then actually making the orange sauce. Here are a list of the ingredients as well as in the description below. Okay, we are going to start with the orange sauce. To begin, place one tablespoon of oil into a small or medium sized saucepan. You can use vegetable oil, canola oil, soybean oil, it doesn't matter. All of them will work. Next, we are going to take our ginger. We need to remove the skin from the ginger. You can do this by using a spoon or as I'm doing right here, by cutting around the outside and peeling it off. Next, you wanna actually uh, mince the ginger quite fine. Start by cutting it into matchstick pieces, turning 90 degrees and then dicing into a very fine mince. Once you have it minced up very well, we're gonna go ahead and add that into the saucepan with the oil. After the ginger, we are going to do the same with garlic. Here we have two cloves of garlic. Take your knife, smash the garlic to release the skins. It makes it a lot easier to peel. And just like the ginger, we are going to cut into matchstick pieces, turn 90 degrees, and dice fine. Once we have a fine dice, we are going to go ahead and add this to the ginger with the oil in the pot. Lightly saute the garlic and ginger on medium heat, no higher. You do not want to scorch this mixture. It will be disgusting. We are then going to add sugar. The original recipe that I found called for one quarter cup brown sugar and one quarter cup of white sugar. I don't have that where I live right now, so I'm going to use one half cup demerara sugar, which is a mixture of brown and white sugars. I actually don't have a measuring cup, so I'm using a coffee cup in order to use a ratio method for this recipe. It turned out quite fine. Measure out one half a cup of demerara sugar and add that to the pot. Again, with your pot on medium heat, we're going to add the sugar and start stirring immediately. Since the temperature is not too high, the sugar will not scorch or burn. We want to make sure that we are controlling our temperature in this sauce because it does have so much sugar to sweeten it. The next ingredient is one quarter cup orange juice. If you have fresh squeezed orange juice, that would work great in this recipe. I did not, so I went ahead and used a high quality in carton orange juice. This will add a little bit of sweetness and the orange flavor that is attributed with the orange sauce. Following the orange juice, we will add one quarter cup of white vinegar. The vinegar adds an amazing flavor that is quite pungent to the nose. It's actually what you will smell when you, when you smell orange sauce cooking is the vinegar flavor. This adds a little bit of acidity to the sweetness and creates a, a nice balance. Measure out one quarter cup and add that to the sauce pot. After adding the vinegar, we want to make sure to mix the saucepan very well. We have it on a medium heat, so the sugar is not quite dissolved. However, we do not want the sugar to sit on the bottom of the saucepan and get burned or caramelized at this point. Our final ingredient for flavor to the orange sauce will be two tablespoons of soy sauce. Here I'm using a light or thin soy sauce. I don't actually have a tablespoon on hand, so I'm going to be using this spoon that I have. Again, using what you have to make these recipes work. I'll be measuring out three spoonfuls, roughly two tablespoons of soy sauce to the mixture. This will give it that nice salty flavor, again contrasting with the sweet and acidic flavor from the orange juice and the vinegar. We are going to thicken our sauce with a corn starch slurry. What this is is simply two tablespoons of cool water mixed with two tablespoons of cornstarch mixed very well. As you can see here, I'm using my same spoon to measure out two tablespoons of water into my mixing cup. I will follow this with two tablespoons of cornstarch. Once you add your cornstarch to the water, you want to make sure to mix it really, really well. You do not want any lumps. You want to make sure that it's really well integrated before adding into the sauce to thicken. Start by adding two tablespoons of your cornstarch slurry mixture to your sauce. You want to bring it to a boil and allow the cornstarch to thicken your sauce before you add any more. 
Remember, it is always easier to add a little bit more of your cornstarch slurry mixture and make a sauce thicker than it is to thin out a sauce that is overly thick. The cornstarch will not begin to thicken until it is brought to a boil. That's why I'm mixing it quite well and making sure that it's come up to temperature before checking the consistency. Dropping it from the spoon, this looks good. Now that our sauce is complete, we'll pull that from the heat. Our rice is finished cooking. We're going to go ahead and remove that from the heat as well. Next, we want to heat up oil to fry our chicken and some water to cook our vegetables. Here, I've got a saucepan filled one third of the way up with oil. You can use soybean oil, canola oil, vegetable oil, peanut oil. It doesn't matter. All of them will work equally as well to fry your chicken. We have a small saucepan here that I'm filling with water to boil our vegetables. As the oil and water come up to temperature, we are going to prepare our chicken. Traditionally, thigh meat is used, the dark meat. However, here I have a chicken breast, white meat, is what I have on hand, is what I'll use. Regardless of the piece of chicken that you're using, you will begin by removing the skin. Once you have removed the skin and any bones from your piece of chicken, you will cut it into one inch cubes or smaller. I'm using one chicken breast here for two servings of meat. It may not look like a lot, but once it is breaded and deep fried, it actually makes quite a large portion. You can cut your chicken into larger or smaller pieces as you desire. Just remember to pick a size and stick with it so that all the pieces are equal. Finally, season your chicken with salt and pepper or any other seasonings that you desire. Make sure to turn to get even coverage. Step five, we will make the tempura batter for the chicken. Here I'm using a packaged tempura mix from the grocery store. However, if you do not have this available, I will include a recipe in the description below. Check that out. Regardless, if you're using instant or homemade, it does not matter. You want to use chilled water. Here I'm using soda water, which has been refrigerated. It will make a lighter and crispier batter in the final product. Continue to add water little by little until you have batter that is the consistency of pancake batter. Then add your chicken into the batter and get ready to fry. I'm going for 350 to 375 degree Fahrenheit oil. I don't have a thermometer, so I'm going to go ahead and use a drop or two of the tempura batter to test the oil. Place a drop in and see how it reacts. If it bubbles up and comes to the top instantly, you know it's ready. Place your chicken into the oil piece by piece, making sure not to stack it too closely together so that it sticks. Moving on to cook the vegetables. Once the chicken is placed into the oil and starts cooking, we will move on to cooking the vegetables. Here I have broccoli. Place it into the boiling water. Next, I will go ahead and get a plate and place some paper towels on here so that I can place the fried chicken on to absorb some of the oil. Moving on, place the rest of the raw chicken into the tempura batter and get it ready for the next round of frying. We want to make sure that the chicken cooks evenly in the oil. About halfway through cooking, three to four minutes, we're going to go ahead and flip each piece of chicken so that it can cook evenly in the hot oil. Check the doneness of your vegetables by using a spoon to pull out a piece and piercing it with a fork to check the tenderness. Same thing with the chicken. We wanna go ahead and use a fork to test how crispy the outside of the skin is and to confirm that it is fully cooked. Use a slotted spoon or a draining rig to remove as much excess oil as you can before placing the chicken onto the paper towels. The total cooking time was about six to seven minutes for the fried chicken and about five to six minutes for the broccoli. We are going to finish by plating up. The broccoli is on the plate. I'm going to go ahead and fluff the rice with a nice spoon, making it into nice fluffy piles before placing onto the serving plate. Once the rice is on, I'm going to go ahead and serve up the orange sauce. You can choose to toss the fried chicken directly into the orange sauce, which is quite popular. However, I went ahead and put it onto a small plate. To finish out, we'll go ahead and place the chicken onto the serving plate, and we have a full meal. Orange chicken, rice, and broccoli. I'm gonna go ahead and cook a second portion for myself. Fried chicken will keep hot for quite some time, so you can go ahead and cook two rounds of fried chicken and then serve them all at once. Over here, as you can see, I'm cooking a second round of fried chicken as a portion for myself as well as the broccoli. Making sure to flip them halfway through so they cook evenly. 
you can see here, I'm going to go ahead and stir the broccoli and check for tenderness as well. Just as before, you want to make sure that the chicken is nice and crispy. Drain it really well and place it onto paper towels so that it can absorb any excess oil that might be on the chicken. Once the broccoli is done, we will drain that and place that onto a serving plate as well. I'm going to finish off my plate by placing some freshly ground black pepper onto my broccoli and then plating up a nice pile of that fluffy white rice. I actually like to place some of the orange sauce on top of the white rice as a nice seasoning as well as onto a secondary plate so that I can dip my fried chicken into it. And there you are, tempura fried chicken with orange sauce, white rice, and steamed broccoli. Remember, if you like this, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell icon so you can be notified of every time we release a new video. Thank you so much for watching.